Hello everyone. We wanted to send another video out to the community at the end of this week. Uh, we have a very full month of October, like we usually do during the month of October. So we wanted to highlight some things, explain some things, and uh, hopefully get you guys excited about the various events that we have coming up. So first I want to start by speaking more to our March and Serve in the Park event and fundraiser that's taking place this month. For those of you that have been part of the community for many years, you're very familiar with this fundraiser and event for our new families. We know that this is the first time you're joining us in this effort. But really what we want to highlight is that this is the month where we come together to solicit donations for the school, to reach a fundraising goal that ends up satisfying much of the fundraising dollars that we're trying to cover for the operations of the school for this school year. So a lot of that means that we're not necessarily asking families to donate personally, but asking you to reach out to your friends and your family and your relations and anyone else who would be interested in partnering with Providence Classical Christian Academy. And in particular, we're seeking monthly donations uh, this year. And people who would sign up to become monthly donors and partners, not just for this year, but for many years to come, Lord willing. So uh, we wanna really encourage you guys to do that. And likewise, if someone comes forward and says, I would love to give to the school, I'd love to take part in this event, but I'm not interested in signing up as a monthly donor, that's okay. Uh, we, of course, would not turn away a gift of any kind, whether it's a one-time lump sum gift or if it's a couple of installments. Uh, what they'll find when they get online and they go to Facts Giving is that it actually has a lot of different options for how you can give. Uh, it's pretty customizable. And so though we're pushing for monthly givers, once you put in the amount that you want to give, you can decide in what increments you want those to be given, if you want it to be given with any regularity. So uh, hopefully it's a pretty easy and user-friendly interface for you. We've already seen donations come in this week, which is very exciting. And our hope is that starting next week, we'll give you some more concrete updates on how that's going because believe it or not we only have three weeks left of that campaign and uh, something we also like to encourage students to do uh, we have a lot of students that are very generous they want to give of their own money and give uh, some of the funds that they've received as maybe gifts from family members but instead of giving those gifts what we want to encourage students to do is find ways to earn money on behalf of the school we've had many students make crafts or uh, extend opportunities to serve uh, people in their neighborhood, whether it's raking leaves or you name it. We've had a lot of creative ideas come from students over the years and they find ways to, to make their skills and their talents and their time valuable and then of course many people like to be generous when it's going to a good cause. So that's what we would mainly encourage our students to be doing during this time. <clears throat> and then of course there's incentives and there are prizes for students as they bring in money uh, and so whether they're getting a monthly donation or a large lump sum donation, that money uh, is then counted towards them by way of points. And of course, if the whole school reaches our goal, uh, and so our goal would be to get to the point of raising at least $3,000 in monthly pledges or $3,500 in monthly pledges, we would have a half day or a whole day off school on November 24th, which is the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. But then there are class level prizes. If each class raises so much that they get so many points as a class, uh, they've decided on a particular prize for their class. And likewise, there are individual incentives. So students that bring in so much, they can then spend those points on other kinds of prizes. And all of this will, of course, been in the email I sent earlier this week and in the packet that was sent home uh, to, to all of the families. I think the last thing I wanna highlight about March and Serve in the Park is that on October 30th, when we end the campaign, uh, we are planning on marching in the park and serving. Uh, we'll give more details about which park that's going to be at, as well as the time frame for that day. Uh, but we'll march in celebration, and then we'll enter into a service project together and celebrate the way that the Lord has provided once again to the school. I think something I want to make sure is clear uh, about that day is the plan right now is that we would like to coordinate to have families bring their kids directly to the park rather than coming to the school and then working out the logistics of driving uh, all of the kids to the park. Uh, we think it will probably be more consistent with our contingencies to have families go directly to the park to drop off children and then to pick them up there as well. We really invite families to take part in this event, and so if you're able, uh, if you have the time, if you have the flexibility in your schedule to participate, we would love to have you there to participate in the march and in the service project. Uh, and so we really hope to see uh, any, any and all families there that would like to be there. I'll highlight one other thing coming up, and then Mr. Keating will talk to us a little bit more about our new sweatshirt offering and the 
Harvest Festival that's going to come on uh, next Friday. But first, I want to talk a little bit about the end of the quarter because believe it or not, we only have one week left of the first quarter. So Harvest Festival uh, is not only an event in itself, but on that day, we will also be having the final day of first quarter, which is a great milestone going into this year, wondering how is this year going to go? How long is this going to last? And we're so thankful that we're looking back now on almost a quarter complete. But at the end of that quarter, I want to mention that then the following week, report cards will come out that Wednesday, which is uh, October 21st. And then the day after that Wednesday is our parent-teacher conferences, October 22nd. Typically in the past, we would have from about 3.30 to 8.30, 15-minute increments that parents could sign up to schedule to meet with teachers, talk about what they've seen on the report cards, just get a general update about how students are doing in their classes. The main difference, of course, this year uh, is we are looking to do that virtually, and we're going to give more details, more information about how you'll be able to log on and do that. <clears throat> But the sign up for different slots for parent-teacher conferences will be the same. Uh, the main difference is just going to be that you're not walking into classrooms, you are logging on to a particular Zoom meeting or video call. Uh, and then the day after parent-teacher conferences, because that's a very long day, we know for parents and for teachers, we take that day off school. So Friday, October 23rd, we will not be having school. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention about March and Serve in the Park uh, is that that will be a half day as well, and that's October 30th. So today really was kind of the last normal Friday that we have for October. Uh, Mr. Keating will tell you a little bit more about Harvest Festival and what that schedule will look like, but I wanted to give you those updates on March and Serve in the Park, as well as our upcoming parent-teacher conferences as we close out the quarter. I'll pass it on to Mr. Keating. All right, just a few other notes. I wanted to just mention one thing with parent-teacher conferences. We want to really encourage all of our families to participate in parent-teacher conferences. Uh, we think it's a great way for you as parents to be connected and invested in the education of your children, and it allows our teachers to connect with you as well, um, offering feedback and uh, asking questions and whatnot. It really does build um, a, a, it's an opportunity to build a great relationship with your students' teachers and, uh, and is, is really an investment in their education too. And, and uh, students are welcome to attend uh, parent-teacher conferences as well if parents are interested in that. And then if there's a time where parents or teachers want to have a conversation aside from students, they're welcome to do that as well. Um, with respect to uh, the two topics I wanted to address, uh, they're both, they've both been highlighted in the EPAC, but I wanted to touch on them again. The first is the, spirit, uh, the school spirit, Friday School Spirit sweatshirts. That's a mouthful. Um, so starting last week in the EPAC, we advertised that there is an opportunity to order a Providence sweatshirt in either No Nobis Navy or Providence Red. Uh, these are crew neck sweatshirts that uh, vary in sizes from youth extra small all the way up to uh, double or triple XL in adult sizes. And uh, they're, they can be worn outside of school anytime but students are actually welcome to wear these sweatshirts on Fridays as well during the school year. They're not technically part of the uniform, but we are allowing students to wear the, the sweatshirts on Fridays uh, for this particular school year. But because they're, th this is uh, not necessarily technically part of the uniform, it's not something that will be uh, offered throughout the year. This is a sort of one-time opportunity for families to place an order for those sweatshirts if they wish to, um, to, to have them and, and wish to their students to be able to wear them on Fridays. So I just wanted to highlight that for you and, uh, and, and point you back to the EPAC where you can place an order for those. The deadline for ordering those is a week from today. It's October 16th. Um, so we'll mention it again at Harvest Festival as well as a final reminder. But orders will close out on that date and then we'll, we'll hope to have them in in time for uh, our March and Serve in the Park event. Uh, Harvest Festival is the second event I want to talk a little bit more about. It is a week from today on October 16th. Uh, the doors will open at 10 a.m. for guests to enter the building. And the event itself, the program itself, will begin at 10.30 a.m. Um, RSVP is open now. Uh, and so if you check out the EPAC, there's a link to RSVP. Previously, we advertised that there was a limit of two seats per family. But due to counties, uh, St. Louis County's relaxing restrictions, we're actually able to open up more seats. And so families are able to RSVP for up to six seats, including their guests. 
And so if you've already RSVP'd, you can go back in and um, register for a few more seats if you have grandparents or relatives or friends uh, that you'd like to have join us as well. So the big thing to note there is that you're no longer limited to just two seats per family and you're welcome to register additional uh, folks. And our, our cap for the actual venue has increased to about 150 guests that we're permitted to have in the auditorium. Now it is worth noting that we'll have guests in the building, but we'll be continuing to follow all of our uh, pandem pandemic contingencies, which include things like guests need to wear a mask for the duration of their time in the building, uh, and that guests need to maintain social distancing from uh, other guests or students who are not um, in their family group. Uh, so those things will remain the same even as we're inviting guests in the building for the first time. We're excited to be able to have um, our friends and family join us in person. Um, but we also need to observe these, these contingencies and these, these precautions as well. We are planning on uh, live streaming the Harvest Festival as well. So if you have family or friends who are too far away to join us or uh, perhaps are, are uncomfortable in uh, meeting in person at this point, uh, we will have a live stream option and a recording uh, as well of, of the program that you'll be able to send their way. Uh, finally, there won't, there is, uh, there's not going to be the normal reception afterwards due to the general sort of pandemic situation, and so that means the program will begin at 10:30. It should end probably a little bit before noon, and so we'll, we will have a noon dismissal. Um, and we encourage encourage families, uh, you know, to pick up their students from the classroom on that Friday. So we won't do our normal pickup line on Friday, October 16th. You'll actually. Uh, go from the program to your students classroom to pick them up and if for some reason there's no one in your family that's here for the program uh, you'll just come in the main entrance and head to your students classroom to pick them up uh, upper school will be dismissed uh, at, at the conclusion of the program as well we really do encourage you at, at the conclusion of the program at the end of this that half day next Friday to uh, go out and celebrate um, and, uh, and have uh, you know your own sort of feast with your family and uh, friends and, and uh, relatives that you have in town. So that's it in terms of Harvest Festival. Um, a lot on your plate, but uh, I'm going to pass it back to Mr. Buckles to make a couple final comments. All right, so as you can see, there's a lot going on this month. And uh, just to close out, wanted to say that we really hope to see you all at Harvest Festival. I know we won't get to see all of you. Uh, but many of you at Harvest Festival next Friday and then at our March and Serve in the Park as well as at our parent-teacher conferences. And so these are some unique opportunities to get connected, to get connected with teachers, get connected with other families potentially, and uh, participate in the work of the school. So as always, we really thank you all for your prayer. We thank you for your support and all of your encouragement throughout this unique year. Uh, we're very thankful that the past couple of weeks have been pretty quiet in terms of uh, COVID contingencies and pandemic response type things. Uh, we've had pretty normal school weeks and so we're very blessed with that. I'm sure you've noticed or maybe you haven't that there haven't been as many health updates coming out recently. So we continue to pray to the Lord that he provides health to our community and that he continues to bless the work of the school. Thank you all and have a wonderful weekend.